Hi, it's Alaska Granny. Okay, preppers, today is the day. We're not putting it off any longer. Here is a cheap and easy emergency kit. If you haven't put together an emergency, a bug out bag, grab and go, 72 hour kit, something, the bag that can include emergency gear, we're gonna do that today. You can fill up your emergency bag with things you probably already have around the house. Look through your kids' old backpacks. Do you have an old shopping bag? It doesn't matter what you put it in. It's a, that you put things in it, that you have your things together so that you can bug out if you need to. You can keep it in your car, keep it next to the door. Anything can happen at a moment's notice, and we need to be prepared to deal with the challenges that life throws at us. Whatever your container is, I think a backpack is preferable in case I have to put it on my back and walk around. But even if I can't, I can use a shopping bag. You get the idea. Get something. The container isn't what's important. It's that you have content that you can make your life easier. The number one thing you need in your emergency kit is water. We need water to stay alive. Probably you can't fit three days worth of water or three gallons into your container, but get some kind of bottle, you probably already have one, in your kitchen somewhere that you can fill it up yourself and now you have your emergency water ready to go. Then be thinking, where could I refill it when I needed to? Look around your house, do you have a way to filter water? If not, put that at the top of your list that you need to order something, that you need to buy something like that so that you have a way to provide clean drinking water. Next, let's think about food. Go into your pantry, grab some cans of already ready to eat meals that you can just open and eat. Soup, chili, beef stew. Try to find that your cans have pull tabs in case they don't, look in your kitchen cabinet. Do you have some extra can opener that you could put in there? They also make little military can openers for emergencies. Maybe you had them if you were a scout, and I'll put a link to those on how to use them if you want to figure out how to use the P38 or the P51. Grab an orphan spoon. It's better to have a metal spoon than a plastic one. You don't worry about it breaking and you can continue to use it. Next, look over what are some just tear open and eat foods that you can have because cans of food are heavy. Maybe you want pouches of meat, a box of pepperoni, beef jerky. Foods like that are so simple to tear open and eat. How about a box of granola bars? You can find foods like trail mixes, dried fruits, nuts, packages of things like chicken salad with crackers, and then you can always even just drop in a jar of peanut butter because you can use your spoon to scoop it up. You can get some calories, some protein, and get full and get going again. That's the whole point of foods that you can tear open and eat that can help keep you fed and keep you going. It doesn't matter what the food is, something that you can eat without any preparation. Look through your pantry and your cupboards. You probably already have some open and eat foods that you could stick into your emergency kit. Grab a roll of toilet paper, stick it in a Ziploc bag, then it's going to stay clean and dry and you'll be able to, you know, whatever goes in needs to come out, you'll be able to handle that in a sanitary way. Next, think about a few hygiene supplies, a bar of soap, a hairbrush, a toothbrush, some toothpaste, some floss, and grab a small first aid kit. If you don't have a small portable first aid kit, grab a Ziploc bag, add some band-aids, some gauze, tape, antibiotic cream, chapstick, add some things into it so that you will have something that you can put in your emergency kit. Look around your home. Do you have an extra flashlight, an extra pack of batteries? Put that in your kit. A lot of emergencies might happen at night or require us to be away overnight and then you'll be able to have light in an emergency. Even if just the power goes out, you can grab those items out of your emergency kit. You could also get some emergency candles, a pack of matches, and then you'll have some light if you need to in an emergency, but you need to be extra careful if you're burning a candle. You want to put it on a sturdy, non-flammable base then protect that flame so that it can't be knocked over by small children or your pets. Think about a toolkit. What can you have? Do you have a small pocket knife? This one has things like a toothpick and a screwdriver. 
Maybe you'll have one that has a carabiner. It has a nice bigger blade, has some screwdrivers on it. What about a multi-tool? I found multi-tools to be the most useful. I pick them up at Cabela's and they have little pliers and then there's all kinds of little gizmos and gadgets on the handle that can help you with all kinds of tasks that you might need to do in any kind of an emergency situation. Do you have a little coin purse? Could you fill it up with some bills? Make sure that you have small bills so that if you say need to buy a bottle of water, you can peel off some ones or fives or a 10. You don't have to just peel off $20 bills. So take the time to go beyond the ATM, go into the bank and break those 20s into smaller bills so that you'll have more options with your cash. Look in your closet. Grab an extra jacket, a sweatshirt, something that can keep you warm in an emergency. It's easier this time of year because we're going into spring and summer. We don't need a heavy winter coat because if you did, then you're going to probably need a bigger bag than just a dollar store backpack or a shopping bag. But figure out what is the climate, what are you protecting yourself from. Grab a big plastic garbage bag. There are so many ways that you can use a big, large, black plastic trash or garbage bag for emergency situations. You can turn it into a poncho. You can turn it into an emergency shelter. You can wrap up and stay dry if it's raining. There are so many uses for a black plastic bag. Put one of these straight into your emergency kit. Add a few rubber bands so you have some options of how to hook it up, how to manage it, and there you go. You're going to be way ahead if you have a black plastic bag. Then keep looking around. Do you have a roll of duct tape, some work gloves? There are lots of things that you can keep adding into your kit, but this is as far as I'm going to take it today. Look over these options of items that you could quick and easy, not expensive, put into an emergency kit so that you're better prepared for the challenges ahead. Write down a list of your emergency contacts, the phone numbers, addresses, the email things, the contacts that you need for your family members, your employer, your health care information, your children's, your children's school and daycare workers. Write those down. Put them with your emergency gear because if your phone stops working, you're going to still be able to uh, have that information with you. Leave it in the comments below. What are some other items that you think we would want to take with us in an emergency? We want to limit the amount of things that we take for really useful items so that we don't weigh ourselves down with too much, that it becomes too cumbersome, too heavy, too much stuff that we can't manage it. So uh, really think about what is vital and important and how can you have it in a smaller size. But you want to cover all of the areas that are really important to keeping you alive and safe. I hope you like my video. Share it with someone else you think might need to know this information. And please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.